Welcome everybody, I'm really thrilled to be working with teachers in Brazil and I hope you enjoy this presentation. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about what we call mindset mathematics and that combines neuroscience with a different way of teaching mathematics and what I is very important to share that I share with everybody um, is the damage that's caused by this myth of the math brain that so many students and teachers believe this, that you're either born with a math brain or you're not. And we have overwhelming evidence now that tells us that is not the case. And this is not how it works. It's not the case that we're born with a certain brain or we're not, and that decides what we can do in mathematics. This is what happens. This is how we form mathematics pathways. So, um, Three things can happen when we learn something. One possibility, when you first learn something for the first time, a new brain pathway forms. And at first it's a delicate little pathway. But the more you go back to something, the firmer that pathway becomes. The second possibility is you strengthen a pathway you already had. And the third possibility is you form a connection between pathways you already had. These are the three things that happen when you learn something. Every time we learn something, our brain reorganizes. And so this is how mathematical pathways form. Nobody's born with them, and we all develop them over our lifetime the more we learn mathematics. So I could share with you many, many studies showing the incredible brain plasticity, people's brains changing and growing um, over their lifetime, but I'll share just one study with you today. And it comes from Stanford's Neurolabs. They brought in seven to nine-year-old children. Half of them had been diagnosed as having mathematics learning disabilities. Half were regular performers. They looked at them doing maths under MRI scans to see their brains, and they found actual brain differences. But the differences were the students with the so-called learning disabilities had more of their brains lighting up when they worked on a maths problem. So importantly, they worked they conducted one-to-one -one tutoring with both groups of students over eight weeks. And at the end of that eight-week period, not only did the students have the same achievement, but they also had the exact same brain functioning. This is one of many studies that shows that in a very short period of time, often they're eight weeks long, people's brains can completely change and rewire. So I've come to believe over the past few years that there are really only two positions that can be taken. You believe uh, that brains are fixed, which is actually a myth, and it has been disproved by science, but many people think that. Or you know that brains can grow and change. And if you know that brains can grow and change, you really can't hold the position or think about some students, oh, this student's never going to make it to high levels, or this student's never going to learn this. That is inconsistent with the knowledge we now have about brains. And we're working to publish, I'm actually working on a new journal article at the moment, um, to publish the stories of people who've come through incredible um, difficulties to achieve. Dylan Lynn actually was diagnosed with dyscalculia, which is a special mathematical disability in the brain, and went on to, take, uh, to complete a maths degree at university, despite everybody telling her to drop it. Um, she, she was very successful by using her own strategies. And then Nicholas Letchford, his mother, has just published a book about his life. In school, he was diagnosed as having le being learning disabled, having a very low IQ. This past month, he's just graduated with a PhD in applied mathematics from Oxford University. More and more of these stories are coming out of people who've been really written off by others who've gone on to just, uh, who've been really determined and have gone on to do amazing things. So part of this, being able to do that, comes from what Carol Dweck has identified as your mindset. So through decades of research, she's shown that we all have a mindset, a set of beliefs about our own potential. Some people believe they can learn anything, and some people think their brain is kind of fixed, their intelligence is fixed. Which of those things you believe actually changes what you learn and how much you learn. 
And this graph shows us some of that. This is a depiction of students going through seventh and eighth grade. These students are those with a fixed mindset, and these students are those with a growth mindset. You can see their achievement goes onwards and upwards all of the time. So how do people get these damaging fixed mindsets where they don't believe they can learn anything? Turns out we have these little tiny words that are rather innocuous, seem innocuous, but are very damaging. The word smart, the word gifted. Um, I don't know what these are in other languages, but in the English language, these are fixed ideas that people hold and they lead to fixed mindsets. They are also these ideas um, uh, what keep girls and women out of STEM. Many young women have been praised all their life for being smart, uh, which helps them develop this fixed mindset and eventually um, they choose not to do harder subjects because they don't want to let go of that label. And the reason that label is so damaging is this, if you've been told you're smart or you have a maths brain or you're gifted and then you have to struggle on some work, that struggle is really devastating. And I, I keep being reminded of this by my students at Stanford. One in the teacher program last summer, I was describing the damage of the gifted label and these ideas. And she said to me, oh my gosh, you're describing my life. She said, I grew up, everybody said, you're so smart, you have a maths brain, you're gifted in maths. She said, I enrolled at UCLA uh, in, in a maths major. And in the second year of my program, I really struggled. So I decided I didn't have a maths brain and I dropped out of my maths major. Um, this is part of the reason we have to stop giving kids these fixed labels.